What up gamers, I'm Sir Mab and welcome back to another Anthem video. This week we had a new update come through for Anthem, patch number 1.1, which added a new Dominion focused stronghold known as the Sunken Cell. To give you a bit of backstory for this stronghold, this is an old facility of Dr. Harkins. If you forgot who that is, he was the Dominion doctor that led the Dominion to Freemark to take over a Shaper relic hidden underneath the city. And we all know how that ended up. Anyway, this facility was a place where they worked on their experiments and we've been sent by Corvus to discover what they've been working on and shut it down. So today, as some may have trouble getting through the stronghold, I wanted to make a guided walkthrough as you progress and push your team to the harder content of Grandmaster 2 and 3. The tips within this video would definitely help you out when you get into the higher level of difficulty for this stronghold. So with that, let's jump in. This stronghold itself I believe is the best stronghold by design that we have seen so far in Anthem. It has plenty of combat opportunities, team coordination, and a very unique aesthetic to its level design. It's also broken up into these different cells underwater which allows team members to not get too far ahead and work together to work their way to the top of the facility above the water. Well, sort of. This entire facility is underwater, thus the name, the Sunken Cell. You'll start off at the bottom of this facility where you'll have to fight the Dominion, and eventually flight suppression will kick in and kick your team to the ground. Your next goal is to disable flight suppression, so as you take on the Dominion turrets, just be sure someone is within the signal area so that you can continue to disable the flight suppression system. Once that's complete, a door will open and you'll be prompted to head east into the next room. After taking out the first wave of enemies in the next room, you'll hear Sev prompt you to step on the plates in the right order to unlock the next room. There are two sides of this puzzle, so you can either have two players take on each of the puzzles, or have three javelins focus on the inland's adds while one player takes on the two puzzles. The puzzles are rather easy, simply walk up and interact with the beacon and this will prompt the glowing markers on top of each of the plates. The glowing markers signify which plate to step on first and in what order, so in this case the back left glowed first, then the back right, and then the front. So if we step on those plates in that sequential order, then the plates will unlock and the first beacon will light up. You or another teammate will then do the same to the other side. Once both sides are unlocked, a door will open in the center tube. Enter the door and swim your way up till you see the shining light to the next room. After taking out a few enemies here, a door will open up at the south end of this room. You'll fly through this really cool shaper tube that will lead you to another room with these lighted tubes above the ground. Your team will then need to interact with each of these tubes so that each of them are all submerged underground. Now this can be done with one person if you're fast enough, and I've done it, but your best option is to assign two javelins to focus on the tubes while the others focus on adds. But if you're not fast enough, the tubes will come up after a short period of time forcing you to interact with them once again until they are all submerged underground at once. Once they are all underground, this will silence the cataclysm taking place around you, and you'll be prompted to travel up to the next level of the facility. The next level will house a few enemies and your next entrance up through the facility. Go to the tube door and swim your way up to the next level. This next level will have more enemies, including Dominion turrets, that you and your team will need to take out before you can move on to the next room. Once complete, you'll have your first chest to open up and you can move on through the stronghold. To get to the next room, you'll have to head through the door and travel underwater till you reach this open area. This area is three levels with three more puzzles to solve. These aren't difficult puzzles either, but at higher difficulty tiers you'll need to make sure your team is watching your back so you can focus on aligning the symbols. This puzzle is exactly the same one we saw during the mission with Dax and we simply need to align the symbols while on the platform. The puzzles will be shown by this bright greenish ring. Once activated the symbols will start to spin. The center symbol will signify which symbols you'll need to align with one another. Simply interact with the puzzle every time these symbols are about to align until they are all connected. Keep in mind that if you do mess up here, then you'll have to start over from the beginning and realign the symbols once again. Once all the puzzles are complete, three doors will open at the top level of the water tube, providing you with a path to the next area. Make your way to the top of the tube and head through the tunnel to the southeast to the next and last area before the final boss. Oh, and also before you get to that last area, there's these beams of energy that shift their position about every 5 seconds. Easy enough to maneuver through, but just don't touch the beams as they'll cause damage, force you to overheat, and you could end up in the electrified floor on the bottom. But once through, there's a switch at the end that opens the door and shuts down the energy beams behind you. So if you wanted, you could have one javelin go through the beams, interact with the button, and the rest of the team can come through without having to worry about the beams. After you've pressed the switch to open the door, you'll have another chest to open up, and on this last room you enter, you shouldn't need my help to open. You've seen this sort of puzzle in the strongholds before, so simply collect all the echoes, deposit all 12 of them into the Shaper Relic, and you unlock the door. 
There are turrets throughout this large area, so be sure and evade the rockets as they lock onto you. The Colossus, you can just power through or take out the turrets for your team. It's your choice. Once complete, the door will open to the tube next to the Shaper Relic. Simply enter and swim up to the top of the facility. Now here's where things will get real interesting. Once at the top, you will discover this amazing looking area with walls of water around it. Here soon you will discover Dr. Harkin's abomination that he was working on known as the Unfathomed. It's basically your run-of-the-mill gigantic fury. Now the weak point of this fury is where you see the placement of its seals. Here you'll be able to apply weak point damage to the boss, thus taking it out at a faster pace. There is also a pattern to this fury's attacks and I'm going to run you through each phase of them. There are basically four phases that the boss goes through and each is signified by the health bar at the top of your HUD. In the first phase, the Unfathomed will have two attacks. The first will be a volley of purple electric projectiles that seek out your javelin, and the second is similar but it will only be two projectiles. The second set of projectiles are the more dangerous as when they make contact with your javelin they will create an electrified void around your javelin causing a pulsating area of effect damage as well as an electric status effect upon your javelin. The first attack I mentioned is just a straight volley of impact damage and are easy to dodge and take on with the Colossus Shield. Now around you, you'll notice these structures of rocks and pillars. You can use these as cover to avoid these two attacks. Just keep in mind of the second attack as it can still cause you damage if you're close enough to the cover it impacted on. You'll also want to coordinate combos as often as possible with your team as it seems to stun the fury from initiating its attacks. Once you take out the first bar of health, the boss will teleport back to its entry point and summon gates in the center of the room. Elemental creatures will spawn from here so be quick to take them out so you and your team can get back to focusing on the boss. Once the gates are destroyed, the Unfathom will continue to attack your team. After a rather angry tantrum, the Unfathom will commence using the same attacks on your team that I mentioned before. The only changes will be that the first volley of projectiles will be extended and the second attack with the void projectiles will go from 2 to 6 projectiles. From here you will continue the process of attacking and using cover to wear down the boss to the halfway mark. Once you get the boss down to this mark, the boss will once again teleport to its entry point. This time, instead of gates, you'll have to take out these portal turrets that shoot projectiles out at you just like a regular turret would. It's also keen to note here that your ultimate will have no effect on these portals, so save it for the boss and use your guns and gear abilities on them. Once again, the massive fury will utilize the same two attacks, but again these abilities will be buffed. In this third phase, the first volley attack will yet again have an increase in the amount of projectiles released and the second attack will increase from 6 to 9 projectiles. Oh, and there's also this teleport melee attack that it will use if you get too close, so keep your wits about you or fight from a distance. Once you get the boss down to a quarter of its health, it will now exploit everything from before upon you. It will spawn the gates in the center and the portal turrets around the room. The Unfathomed boss will continue its attacks as it did in the previous phase, so continue to use the same tactics as before until the boss is defeated. And that is the Sunken Cell Stronghold. In my opinion, definitely the best so far of all the strongholds we've seen, but likely not the best in terms of farming legendary gear. Temple of Scar and Heart of Rage are still more efficient in the time it takes to complete. This one, I feel, is better designed and has a good flow of content between each stage though. So if you haven't already, grab your team and get out there and try out this new stronghold. If you've already completed the stronghold, what are your thoughts on it? Any other tricks you found that could help teams clear this boss at a quicker pace? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and tap fire subscribe for more updates and future guides on Anthem. Until next time gamers, this is Sir Mav, signing off.